everybody, Karen Roby here for Tech Republic and ZDNet. Uh, happy today to be joined uh, and talking here with Marcus Fowler. Marcus is the Director of Strategic Threat at Dark Trace. I have to say, Marcus, before we start, it actually sounds like a really cool title with the name Dark Trace. Like all of that just sounds, it sounds really cool. Yep, it, it, it's got a great name, and especially, you know, so for me, I, I left the CIA, and our founders came from MI5, MI6, and, and Cambridge University mathematicians, so it has kind of that that mystique and that, and that origin story along with it, so uh, yeah, but it, it, is, it, is, it is a great name, because we kind of are looking for those things that come out of the dark, right, those, those things that you aren't predicting, or you can't see coming, and uh, being able to kind of trace at least what's happening within your environment, and sure, it stopped. Yeah, absolutely. And we need it for sure. And you just mentioned the word uh, predict, and that's what we're going to do. Talk here about some predictions uh, for 2021 as we round out, fortunately, this this year, 2020. Uh, so let, let's start with 5G. Of course, we're, we're moving now from that hype phase to reality, and we're, we're starting to see 5G inching its way in a little bit more. Um, one of the issues uh, being a new wave of DDoS attacks uh, ushering that in. Talk a little bit about that and your concerns. Sure, and I think we all recognize that with 5G, one thing we're gonna see is, is speed, right? And, and with speed comes opportunity, right? And, and it's not just, we're talking about what's happening with on the phones, but on IoT devices and all the things that we're increasingly becoming dependent on. And I think even more so just in the last eight months and that machine to machine communication, right? As you speed that up, uh, and you speed up that attacker machine to machine communication, you really can, can start to up level the ability to conduct these denial of service attacks. And so while they maybe not have been necessarily as in fashion, uh, you know, we're seeing the, the ransomware trends and some of those more, you, you will probably see a resurgence of DDoS attacks as they're able to kind of crank into and, and leverage the, the increased speed and the increased dependency on IoT devices uh, in a way that, that we maybe haven't seen them as monetized in the past, you know, kind of connectivity, you know, ra ransom against connectivity rather than ransomware of files, right? We know that that monetization of the attack is, is, is what cyber criminals uh, want more than anything that makes them criminals. Uh, and, you know, the more it, creative they can get as we've seen them involved trade crap wise within ransomware this could be just another extension of a bay to get that great return on investment that we, we we see them benefiting from and when you talk about that unfortunately that return of investment we're not just talking about a huge enterprise i mean we've, we've interviewed companies smaller companies that have paid out huge amounts you know millions of dollars to to gain back control of their system so is there a certain targeted area you see or is it everyone's free game yeah that's a great question uh and really what we what we have seen and what, what i hope companies are recognizing is that that the that the comment of we're too small we're not in that critical industry you know our market cap they can, the attackers are scaling in a way that it is an amount of are you worth it it's a it's a it's whether you're vulnerable to it Right, it, it, they will they will take low hanging fruit as well as go after yeah you know, the biggies. So there's you know whether you're that bottom feeder who maybe wants the the easy low dollar win or these apex predator ransomware attacks that are doing more enhanced targeting, uh, more enhanced tradecraft to ask for the big ransom. You know there the. There isn't an industry that's off the table. You know, I, we've seen growing in manufacturing. We've seen growing in higher ed. Uh, we've obviously seen healthcare spike. You know, supply chains are growing. They're more diverse and more vulnerable. There's more opportunity than than and vulnerability out there. So I, I certainly would say, you know, please if, if you're if you're a company or CEO listening, don't assume you know your company isn't on a target deck or doesn't become a target of opportunity for these attackers. Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, everyone is, is an opportunity for them. And like you said, I mean, in 5G, for all of the great things it's going to, to bring to our lives, hopefully faster speeds and all of that, but it's enabling the criminals to do their work quicker, faster, and, and, and better. Yep. That's exactly right. I mean, anytime you have a, a, an evolution or, or an expansion of technology, the, the attackers are in their lockstep learning about its vulnerabilities, its unique positioning, right? We see this with like software as a service, right? Where 
we have so much more dependency on th on different applications. We know attackers are also know, hey, is that a diversity of the how the security team understands that that space? Is there more? Is there a, a loss of visibility there? Uh, how how are we and can we take advantage? And they're going to be creative, right? Let's let's not take anything away from it. They they, they are making their living and doing this. They're they're good at it, and they are getting ever more creative in their approaches with each change in technology. Unfortunately, uh, all right. Let's let's switch uh, topics here from from five G to AI. Uh, Marcus, what are you thinking here in, in terms of AI? We we've talked specifically about how it will power internal security investigations. Expand on that for us. Sure, and I, and I love that that you kind of we have these two predictions next to each other because one is uh, the space is getting better for the attacker and the technology around five G, and this one is about leveraging technology to enhance the security practitioner and the security team, right? And, 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 and this for me is really great. And, and Darktrace as a company, we are an AI company applying that to, to cybersecurity. Uh, so looking at how not only it can provide enhanced visibility and understanding, but how are we helping the human team, right? How are we providing autonomous triage, autonomous investigation so that the AI is really enabling? We often hear about uh, skills gaps or skills shortages, but really it's a cycle shortage. It's, uh, you know, you want to do more efficient use of your human team, right? And yes, there are skills shortages, but the real, I think, strain on the security team is how can we be doing more with what we have? And that AI technology is so perfectly positioned for that, right? So as we look at AI for detection, I think security investigation, being able to do some of the commodity heavy lifting of that early investigation to allow security teams to start from a point of action rather than initial investigation. And, and I, for me, it, it resonates so perfectly. You know, I spent 15 years at the CIA. I did a decade of counterterrorism work and my greatest stress every day was, am I using those critical human resources, those real experts on the most credible and imminent threat? And that was so hard because we had so many threats going on that it was really hard to say yes with confidence that they are looking at the thing that is of the greatest concern. And so as I've watched Darktrace really deploy this and use this in a way, really resonating across security teams of how much kind of supercharging that investigation by starting from a point of action rather than having to kind of muddle through false positives or dealing with alert fatigue or, or you know, kind of trails that go cold, having something to really start and make the most efficient use of those critical human teams. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we'll certainly need it. You know, we, we hear, uh, unfortunately, so much more uh, people that didn't really know about or care about cybersecurity as much are now starting to really figure out just how vulnerable we can be, not only personal level, but, you know, company-wide level, uh, of course, as well. Um, and, and with this pandemic and everyone being remote, just hearing so much more about it and, and that lends itself to kind of a negative vibe, Marcus. So as we, as we round out this year, let me just ask you to try to turn it on to a, a positive twist here. As you look to 2021, uh, is there any particular or tech or ideas, programs, things you see on the rise uh, that you're excited about? Well, I mean, I, I guess rather than just being excited about the technology, I, I am excited about the appreciation and the realization of that cyber dependency and that cyber vulnerability and an increase in dialogue uh, from companies and, and, and resource commitment uh, to kind of protect them, their critical infrastructure, their, their employees and that dynamic workforce. Uh, as I talk to industry leaders, CISOs and CIOs, hearing more from them about how, uh, how much part of the conversation they are, uh, that, that to me is, is a real bright light because that means people are and companies are really uh, thinking through and thinking about what is my risk? What is the security that I, I, I feel comfortable and I really want to have in place? And they're starting to have very honest conversations with themselves. So I don't want to pin my hopes on a, a technology. I, I, I do believe in humans. I, I do believe in our ability to kind of uh, find our way forward and, and, and be optimistic and, and really seeing these healthy conversations happen. 
earlier rather than later, right? You don't want to have this conversation of what can I do now that I've been had by an attacker, but really how can I make sure that we aren't the ones that get, that get attacked or not the ones that don't get attacked, but we don't have anything but attacks that are unsuccessful because they're blocked at the earliest moment through that application of technology. That, that to me is, is, is something that I'm taking and, and in the conversations I have, uh, really seeing a, a lot of great dialogue around. Yeah, and you know, Marcus, that's really good to hear. It's, it's uh, I think it's positive to hear that, you know, CIOs, CTOs, that they're feeling that their input and, and information on cybersecurity is, is definitely being heard now more than ever. And, and having that dialogue is, is, is really so important. Uh, well, of course, we have much more on 5G and on AI, what you need to know uh, on our website there at Tech Republic. We hope all of you will check it out. And Marcus, we appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you, Karen. It's been fantastic. Thank you.